Have you ever heard a technician ask, did you ohm it out and kind of have no clue what they were really talking about? Or did you ever take a resistance reading with your multimeter and have no clue what that number means? Is it good? Is it bad? How do you know? We're going to cover those topics and a few more things in today's video as we start diving into how to test very common components that are often found in heating and air conditioning systems. When we take a voltage reading or we take an ohm reading or an amperage reading, what we're really trying to figure out is if electricity is flowing through the circuit at the proper rate. Now, in order for a light bulb to put off a certain amount of light or a heater to put off a certain amount of heat or a motor to spin at certain RPMs, we need to deliver the right amount of energy at the right speed to get those results. If we have too much or too little, it's going to cause problems. Now, there's two variables that will affect the speed at which power flows through a circuit. One is voltage, the other is resistance. So what I have here is a little simulator that can show us this relationship and how voltage and resistance can affect current flow or the rate of power flowing through the circuit, which is measured in amps. So this V, that is our voltage, that R is our resistance measured in ohms, and the I is our current, which is measured in amps. So you can see if I increase the voltage, that I starts to get bigger and bigger, all right? So that means our current is increasing. We're, we're now, we now have more amps on this circuit. Whereas if I decrease the voltage, our current starts to drop off or our amperage decreases. So you can see how changing voltages can change the speed at which power flows through the circuit. Likewise, resistance has the same effect, only on the opposite manner. So if I increase resistance, all right, that is going to decrease the flow of power through the system or our current or amperage. If I decrease the resistance, you can see our current can now flow faster and faster. And so we have a higher amperage. The easiest way to remember all of this is with a really simple analogy that's kind of hard to forget. Think of power flowing through a circuit like a car driving down the street. Voltage is like the gas pedal, resistance is like the brake. So in order for us to have full control over the car and get to point A to point B safely, uh, we need to have control over the gas and the brake. And so in a circuit, it's very similar. You have to have the right amount of voltage with the right amount of resistance, which then delivers the right amount of current so that our car or our component, whether it's a relay, a contactor, a motor, um, can function properly and within safe parameters. Now, when we're talking about relays, contactors, transformers, motors, uh, generally what we're talking about are coils and windings. And the whole purpose of coils and windings is to generate a magnetic field. Now, the current flowing through these coils or windings is going to determine the strength of that magnetic field. And that magnetic field is going to determine when a contactor pulls in, a relay switches, motors spin, and so forth. So you can see how voltage and resistance can change the current, which can change the magnetic field on things like coils and windings, which can change the operation of things like relays, contactors, motors, and so on. So going back to the beginning of the video, when a technician asks you, did you ohm it out? What they're actually asking you is, did you take a resistance reading on that component or that part of the circuit to see if the resistance value might be way too high or way too low, which will affect the current draw, which will affect, you know, things like magnetic fields and proper operation of components. And that brings us to our second question. How do you know if a reading is good or bad? Um, generally, a voltage reading can sometimes tell you whether or not your resistance reading might be off. So what I have here as an example is a very simple circuit. It's a transformer putting out 24 volts to a contactor that you would find in an outdoor condenser unit on a split system air conditioning system. So you got 24 volts from the transformer to the contactor, goes through the coil inside the contactor, and then returns back to the transformer as a common. Now, if I were to take my multimeter and I put both of my probes on both sides of the contactor to read voltage and I read 24 volts. What that's telling me is that the contactor is getting the rated voltage. So if that contactor is not pulling in at that point, if I were to do a resistance reading, uh, the odds are pretty good that whatever that reading is, it's bad, whether it's high or low. Um, so if I'm reading 50, 60, 70 plus ohms, um, that's telling me I have a bad coil 
um, it's corroding, it's providing too much resistance now, uh, which is reducing the amperage flow. It, that is reducing the magnetic field that can be generated. Um, and we're simply not creating enough of a magnetic field to pull that contactor in. You can also have a situation where your resistance value is very low. Let's say it's close to zero. Um, that's an indication you have a short in that coil somewhere. The resistive value of that coil has completely been lost and our current is allowed to travel so quickly that at this point we're probably tripping breakers or blowing fuses or in this case I have no protection on this circuit so I'm probably burning out that transformer. Uh, you can also get a reading of OL which is an open line or out of limits which means you actually have a broken coil. Uh, it's physically separated and you no longer have a complete circuit. And so you have no current draw whatsoever. Now, if I were to do a voltage reading and I was only getting 16 volts, if I went ahead and I did a resistance reading, the odds are pretty good that resistance value might be good, whatever it might be. So if I'm reading 20 ohms, um, that is not my problem. That, that's probably a good reading. And my problem is obviously I have low voltage. I'm losing voltage somewhere. And so again, voltage will reduce current or the amperage that will reduce that magnetic field that is strong enough to pull in that contactor. So sometimes you can use both readings side by side to kind of get a feel for you know what looks good, what doesn't look good, and where your problem may actually be. So I'm going to leave it there for now. In the next video, we'll get into things like proper probe placement when you're testing for voltage or resistance, uh, amperage. Uh, we're going to talk about voltage drop, potential difference, maybe even cover a little phantom ghost voltage. And what all this means when we're actually trying to diagnose systems and not misdiagnose systems. So hopefully this stuff is helping you guys out. Hope to see you on the next one.